Friends, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we gather in the Lord's house, I am very grateful that Jesus welcomes all of us. No matter who you are, no matter where you've come from, Jesus welcomes all of us to this table of amazing grace. We are reminded this morning that we are the baptized children of God. Jesus is the light of the world. And in the Sermon on the Mount, he looks his disciples in the eye and says, you are the light of the world. Friends, we welcome you to this time of worship on this beautiful uh, first day of summer. I think today is the solstice or maybe early in the hours uh, of tomorrow morning. But we have a number of announcements. Some of you are walking in the sanctuary with bulletins. We haven't done bulletins uh, since the pandemic uh, began so we're grateful for these small steps and we have an additional two more things for your information if you're worshiping with us in person you also note the return of the welcome cards and prayer cards in the seats in front of you if you have a prayer request find that prayer card fill that out and in the service during the offering you can put that prayer card either here in the front or in the back. And if today is your first day worshiping with us, there are uh, welcome cards. And we encourage you to fill that out so we can check in with you and give you an extra special welcome. And you too are invited to put that in the offering as your offering to the Lord today. Additionally, um, 
during the pandemic, we've played with this idea of the offering. So starting today, this is a trial run. We're going to try it for a few weeks and see what happens. The offering is a time where we give our gifts to the Lord, right? But if you've been worshiping in person, we've been doing that at the end in the offering box in the back. If you would like to, during the offertory today, you are welcome to come forward and place your offering or your prayer request to the Lord on the communion table here. Or you're also welcome to continue to give your offering in the back. This is a trial run. We'll see what happens. But we know that for some folks, coming forward to give your gift to God is an incredible act of worship. So thanks as we try something new, as we take one more step coming out of the pandemic. Pastor Shanna. Good morning. So great to be with you on this pretty morning and on Father's Day. We are gearing up and finally doing some really fun stuff this summer that we weren't able to do last year. Family Ministry in August on Saturday the 21st is hosting what we're calling a neighborhood night out. Not only for our families at Covenant, but for our entire neighborhood surrounding Covenant. We're going to do some really cool things, and I need your help to make this work and be successful. We're going to have some classic cars for a little car show. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to do live music, and we're going to have some fun family and kid activities. If you have a classic car, or you know someone who has a classic car, please let me know. We would love to invite you to be part of our little mini car show. We'll have some cool prizes that will go out to a few of the cars that enter. So you can contact me via email or my cell number, and all that's available on our website. I'm really looking forward to a fun night in community with our people. More so, we are really uh, enthusiastic about this idea of building community on July 25th. We really want to bring together some folks uh, of younger generations, ages 18 through 45-ish, and talk about what it means to be the church of Jesus Christ in an age group where here in America, a majority of that age group would say that they are not Christian. The mission field is all around us. Some of your kids may be part of this group. We don't care if they come to church or not. We just want to come around a table and talk about what it means to be Jesus' followers today. So July 25th, hope to see you or your children there. We also have coming up next Monday night, um, a fun opportunity for fellowship of our church, but also to really support a small community business, Brown Sugar Soul. Many of you know that food truck. It's often voted one of the best in the Valley. It's Yvonne's 10th anniversary of having her food truck. So she will be here next Monday evening, the 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m. She's actually offering plates of food for free to the community, but she'll have a donation jar as well. So we invite you to come. Kevin's doing a picnic with the pastor. Stacy and I will be here the entire time, so we hope that can be a great night of celebration. Next Sunday, June 27th at 3 o'clock p.m., the Emmett Presbyterian Church will be celebrating their closing worship. Uh, our Presbytery Executive, Daryl Wilson, will be preaching that day, a time of celebration uh, for ministry in one of our communities and our sister church, and there will be a reception afterwards. And if you have free time, I encourage you to join us for that. And finally, our last announcement. There's been a lot of announcements this morning, huh? As we come out of the pandemic, we are in need of welcoming folks in the foyer. This is a way to give to the ministry without giving money. So if you are not signed up uh, to be a greeter or an usher, I'm looking at you, and we would love for you to sign up at the Connection Center following this service so we can be sure we have a full team of smiling faces in the foyer. Well, friends, the time is here when we come together to ascribe glory, laud, and honor to the Lord our God, for the miracle of your life, for the life that God is calling you to as we prepare for this time of worship. Let us take a moment of silence and lift our hearts to the Lord. Almighty God, before whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our mind by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us stand and sing our praise to the Lord as we sing together our first hymn. The Bible tells us that if we say that we are without sin and you've got your whole life together, that the only person you're deceiving is yourself. But the Bible also says that if we confess our sin, that God who is faithful and just will forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Spirit of humility, I invite you to pray the prayer of confession now that it's your mind. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin, cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. According to the glory of your holy name, amen. Friends, here's the good news of our Christian faith, that while we were still sinners, God loved you and this world so much, came to be with us in the person of Jesus, to teach us the ways of the kingdom of God, of love and of mercy and of grace. And when this good news was threatening to the powers of the world and the government executed our Lord on a cross, God continued to love you and this world so much that overcoming the power of death, overcoming the power of hell, Jesus rose in victory to show me and you and this whole world if we would just put our faith in him, that we could be certain that our sins are forgiven and the path to eternal and abundant life lie close at hand. Good news of the gospel. You are loved, you are forgiven, you are called to abundant life. So what do we do with this love? We share it. Audra, would you lead us as we stand and sing our responsive hymn? Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Exodus 20, 1 through 17, and it can be found on the overhead screen. Let us all pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make your, for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. 
You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall make no wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is within them. But then he rested on the seventh day, and therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear fault witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Friends, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Without giving up any confidences, I want to share with you a brief story about a father who came into my office this past week. And I love being an approachable pastor, one that you feel comfortable coming to me, sharing what God is doing in your life. And this father came up to me this week and said, you know, Kevin, you've been preaching about the Ten Commandments. God gave the world 10 commandments. Why is it that my wife has given me 152 commandments in my household? And like I always usually do, I'll say, I don't know, but let me to encourage you to keep those 152 commandments as well, because happy wife, happy life. You know how that goes. Well, friends, we've been in a sermon series needling out every commandment that God gave Moses on Mount Sinai because I believe that the law given to Moses then points us to life. Now, the law usually convicts us of our sin, and in that conviction, pointing us to the covenant of love that we find in Jesus Christ. But context matters, right? So I want to remind us of what's happening in the story of God's people as God is giving the Ten Commandments. The people were oppressed, slaves in what country? Egypt. It's nine o'clock. We're still asleep. The slaves were in Egypt, God's people, and God was taking them through the desert and into the promised land. Thank you to the folks up front. And as God is taking the people from slavery, from oppression, from bondage to their freedom, to their new identity as God's people, God gives them guidelines for living. The Ten Commandments. Now we've gone through the first two. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall make no false idols. And today we come to the third commandment, which is given so that God's people may know life. Are you with me? These commandments are given so that you may know life. So let's tease out this third commandment this week. The third commandment is brief. And God says, you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Now, growing up in my household, as we think about Father's Day, language could be quite colorful. But there was one rule 
about language that you did not violate in the starter house. And it was this, you do not take the name of the Lord your, your God in vain. So if we were to say, oh my God, punishment was coming. I remember in my high school Spanish class, Mr. Bradford, the biggest lesson that I learned in Spanish class was this. Mr. Bradford knew this commandment. And on the first day, he says, many of you have a God, a Christian God in small town, West Virginia. But I want you to know that his last name is not damn it. So I do not want to hear that phrase uttered at all. And I thought, wow, Mr. Bradford knows the starcher rule. You do not say the name of the Lord your God in vain. To this day, I cringe a little when I hear people say, oh my God, or Jesus. I cringe a little from this upbringing that I think that was good because we don't want to take the Lord, the name of the Lord in vain, do we? But as we dig deeper into this text, I believe that this commandment is less about our language, which is important, but more about your identity. So let's tease this out, and we're going to uh, do some Hebrew lessons today. This is the word tisa. And this verb quite literally means to bear. And this is where we translate the make or take. It comes from tisa. So you shall not bear the name of the Lord or take it on. Which says little about our language, but more about the identity that God's people take on. God's people were coming out of Egypt, right? They are taking on the name of God's people. They belong to Yahweh. They're taking on that name. And in this sense, this word also has some uh, overtones or undertones about uh, an oath that one might take or a vow. So God's people are taking on the name of the Lord, and God implies that by taking on the name of God's people, there is a vow or a promise to that. Tisa. This shows up twice in the Hebrew. The next word that I want to give us a little Hebrew lesson is the word lasha. And this is where we get the English translation in vain or falsely or wrong. So you shall not take the name of the Lord falsely. Friends, I believe this has less to do with the language that we use and more so about the lives that we live, the actions that we take. Is your life worthy of taking on the name of the Lord? Because the commandment says the Lord shall not acquit anyone who takes on the name of the Lord falsely. Here's the whole verse in the Hebrew. And um, there are a few Bible nerds in here. Some of you know that Robert Alter, a professor of Hebrew, came out with his uh, magnum opus work of translating all of the Old Testament. Uh, this came out just a few years ago. And I really appreciate Alter's translation, which is shown here at the bottom. Verse 7, Alter translates this, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not acquit Whoever takes his name in vain. Don't act like you're a Christian. Say you're a Christian. And then behave not in accordance with the lifestyle of expectation of that calling upon you. Because the Lord your God will not acquit those who don't live according to the name of the Lord your God. You see, even Jesus knew that this commandment is less about your language and pointing to the wholeness, the totality of your life, which brings us to our second scripture reading today. It's from Matthew's Gospel, the great Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is referring to this commandment 
uh, in the 33rd chapter, or 33rd verse of chapter 5. Sisters, listen again for the word of the Lord. Jesus says again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, don't swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Simply let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know those times in pop culture, right? You go to the courtroom and you take your oath. Or you see our politicians taking their oath of office. It's like we create special times where people are supposed to be especially honest. Do you promise to be really honest during this really special time? We make something important of this. And Jesus says, you have heard in ancient times where you should not swear falsely. But I say to you, do not swear at all. These words that we use is simply let your yes be yes, your no be no in everything that you do. Because by your actions, not in some special time of where you're supposed to be especially honest, but by your actions, you declare to the world your allegiances. Who is your God? So if you're behaving honestly or with pure motives, maybe you're a child of Yahweh. But if you are behaving according to impure motives, or there are times in your life where your words are not reflective, or your actions are not reflective of your faith, the Lord will not acquit those who take his name in vain. Your actions, they matter. So let's look around for a minute. Do we know anyone whose actions do not live up to their calling in Christ? You know, it can be easy for Christians to judge others, right? We can think of organizations who misuse the name of the Lord. The Westboro Baptist Church, right? Who go around boycotting funerals of soldiers who carry up hateful signs, God hates fill in the blank. Taking the name of the Lord in vain. God's going to judge them. Boy, it feels good to judge those people. Or those folks who wear white robes today. The name of the Ku Klux Klan. And they burn their crosses to illuminate the love of Jesus Christ as they lynch the person of color in their neighborhood. Taking Christianity in vain. And God says, I will not acquit anyone who takes the name of the Lord in vain. And it's easy to judge those folks, right? In fact, it's easy to judge. Does anyone here watch The Office? No one watches, thanks Chad, you watch The Office, thank you. There's a character in this comedy named Stanley Hudson. And Stanley is a hard-working, um, he's a salesman. But don't cross Stanley Hudson, because he will go after you. Now this clip that I'm going to show you is designed to be comedic, but I believe that it really... Um, illuminates our human desire to judge other people. Because I want to judge those Westboro Baptist Church folks, right? I want to judge the Klan. It feels good. Stanley is going to talk to us a little about this concept of judging others. 
I have been trying to get on jury duty every single year since I was 18 years old. To get to go sit in an air-conditioned room downtown, judging people while my lunch is paid for, that is the life. Judging people while your lunch is paid for? Oh, this feels really good, right? So let's judge those terrible Westboro Baptist Church folks. Let's judge the Klan because it feels really good to blame other people, amen? It feels really good to blame the other political party for all the problems of our nation. It feels good to blame our parents for all the problems in my life. And it feels good to blame that person two pews back from us for all the drama that we're having in church. It feels good to judge, doesn't it? Remember what Jesus said about judging as we think about the Westboro Baptist Church or the Klan or that person two rows back from us. Jesus says, before you judge, you should remove the speck from your own eye. For when he encounters the woman caught in adultery at the well, he asks the crowd, you who are without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone. Every single commandment in these Ten Commandments begins with you. The tense of this word in the Hebrew is really applied to you. You, Lucy. You, Julie. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So as we think about all those people who deserve our judgment, God is asking us to look into ourselves and ask, have I been living a life worthy of a child of God? Have I offered kindness to those who spit on my reputation? Have I offered justice when it was far easier to sit back and drink my latte? Have I walked humbly with the Lord when I was too consumed with my own ego or my own needs? Have you ever taken the name of the Lord your God in vain? Have you ever taken the name of your Christian faith and lived in a way that was unbecoming of that. Let those who are without sin cast the first stone. See, this law gives us life. It points us to the life. Your goodness, your freedom is found when you live according to the ways of Yahweh Elohim, the ways of goodness ways of love, the ways of freedom. And this law also convicts us because we all know that there have been times when we have not lived up to this calling. Amen? So what do we do? Paul writes in Romans, I want to do what's good, but when I do what's good, what's When I want to do what's good, I find it to be a law that evil lies close at hand. Paul writes, who will save me from this wretch that I am? Thanks be to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, the context of these Ten Commandments are about the Israelites leaving Egypt, right? But it's also about you. And if you want to find your freedom, your fulfillment, your promise found in Jesus Christ, turn away from the ways of the world and we take on the name of Christ. Christian. That's who we are. Friends, we are all on a journey just like those Israelites. Amen? If you want to get to your own promised land with a land flowing of milk and honey, a land where you can find the wisdom of Moses, the courage of David, 
Friends, if you want to get to this promised land, don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord won't acquit anyone who takes his name in vain. And when we find ourselves convicted, may we turn to Jesus Christ, the author, the perfecter of our life. Amen and amen. Come to the time of our offering. There is beautiful music given to us as a meditation. The Lord has given his life that we may live. What shall we render in return? Friends, if you have a prayer request or a financial contribution, you can bring that up and place it on the table if you would like. There's also a box in the back. If you're worshiping online, you can give to the ministry. But Jesus is less concerned about your dollars and more concerned about your heart. What will you render unto the Lord?
You may be seated. Come to our time of prayer. Today we pray for ourselves that we would not live and take on the Christian name in vain. That we would not judge others, but we would judge our own hearts. That we would turn to our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for our nation. We pray that God would endow a spirit of wisdom and righteousness in all of our nation's leaders. We pray for President Biden and Governor Little. We pray for all city, state, and national delegates. We pray for the leaders in your household that you would lead your house and your neighborhood in a way of accordance with God's will. We pray for our church. We pray for our sisters and brothers in Emmett who are closing a congregation. We wonder, there's some conversation among some presbyters about what might be next in Emmett. Um, those five Presbyterians have said that it was time to stop, but we're wondering if God is up to something new. So we pray that God's spirit would be clearly discerned as we think about Presbyterian mainline Protestant ministry with our neighbors in a growing community. We pray for covenant. In these weird days when uh, we're still thinking about COVID, but we're coming out of the pandemic, we pray that God endows all of you with grace as we figure out, do you shake hands? Do you hug? We pray for grace. We pray that God would use this ministry to be a beacon of light to our neighborhood at McMillan School, at the retirement homes, in the homes around us. So we pray that God would bless this community by a community night out or a brown sugar soul food truck. And friends, you know who leads that ministry, right? It ain't me. It's you. We pray that God would use you to share his grace in this community. Friends, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us of all the times when we say, yeah, I'm a Christian, and our behavior doesn't line up with that. We thank you that you intercede for us, that when God the Father looks at each and every one of us, he doesn't see our sin, but instead sees his son Jesus. So, Lord, help us to take seriously putting on your grace and your love so that we would not take your name in vain, but to live as a people set apart, blessed to be a blessing. Lord, we do pray for our nation. We pray that this pandemic gets behind us, but we pray that we don't go back to quote-unquote normal. We pray that we would be a changed people, change more open and more willing to work for justice and righteousness in this world. Lord, you have revealed how much we need you. Pray that you would empower us to be ambassadors here at Covenant and in our neighborhoods and at our homes. And we pray for our nation as we hear rumors about drought and heat, pandemics, war, Reveal unto us the need for a Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to live responsibly and point people to Jesus' grace in a very uncertain world. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand. Our closing hymn today is Made to Worship.
allow these words to joyfully exit your spirit and lay upon your heart as we stand and sing our closing hymn together. Sometimes I violate the Tenth Commandment, Master. I hear you sing, and I think, oh, I covet a singing voice like that. We are blessed by your leadership. We are blessed by the fellowship of this company. So go, mindful that most of you call yourself a Christian, I beseech you, do not take the name of the Lord in vain. For the Lord will not acquit those who take his name in vain. So friends, when you find yourselves convicted that you can't do this on your own, turn to Jesus Christ in every moment that you may find the life that God has promised his people from Sinai to now. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.